Hello. Well, as I stand before you completely unprepared for any of this, I feel even more like my, I forgot my pants this morning. But uh, our, um, our, um, uh, we're not really trying to participate in the, uh, in the competition because we're already funded. So we basically spend the time talking a little bit through some of the use cases for the MSAP uh, project that uh, Eric uh, presented earlier and um, we talked about some of the demos that we might want to show uh, early on and we had some very good discussions about this. Um, I think I want to take this time to basically ask you to uh, uh, come see us or talk to us about uh, some of the uh, th problems you experience now when you're trying to do new types of design and new types of um, uh, experiments on and basically bringing together different types of experience at the same time. So one of the things we discussed was uh, bringing together uh, DNA origami together with um, protein design and seeing how if we can help you find tooling to make these structures on computers faster and in an easier way for you. Um, does anyone has anything to add? I think so. DNA origami to considerable interest in using DNA origami or other structural DNA uh, technologies to organize proteins that are then consolidated into protein structures that are informed by DNA given their size and shape by the DNA scaffold but now are giving you uh, the, the properties one can get from proteins. There seems to be a direction people are very interested in and having tooling that combines something like CAD Nano with some of the functionality that we see in the protein design world. Uh, those can, I think, be usefully integrated. Do you have anything to add? No, I think that's great. All right, I think that's okay. Yeah. We have questions. And also, if you have specific questions, then you can query the audience now. Yeah, also, I've got comment, a comment for you on the integrating protein design with DNA structures. So this kind of falls up on what Ben asked me yesterday after my talk about how do you start to do that, and I think Things like Rosetta and the PDB, they give you good uh, structure design from the protein side or an example of a previously solved structure. And something like CAD Nano gives you a good how to design a DNA structure. What's missing is the linkage between them. So I think one of the most beneficial parts of anything is a way to richly annotate the interfaces between things. If I could drop in a protein design and now have it labeled where can I possibly functionalize this? So label my cysteine residues, my lysine residues, um, where are my CNN terminals, as well with my DNA strands, you know, which strands might be amenable to functionalization, which ones are nicely externally positioned. Any sort of um, identification like that of building the interfaces might be more of a killer application than trying to beat out any of the existing tools as far as design from the ground up. Okay. Do you want to hear, like, do you want to ask a specific question? Like, is there a specific input that you're looking for from the crowd on specific questions? If they came to see you, what should they come see you about? Well, specific? we're basically looking for the most part about um, like API surface that you would need when you're actually writing some of these uh, uh, tools that you're using now. Like, what kind of API service would you want to see? What kind of representations do you want to see in order to make uh, writing the software you do now faster and easier for you? We want to uh, prevent. We want to make sure that you don't need to like learn how to write OpenGL or DirectX or anything like that to to get your three D structures shown. We don't want you to have to pick between Qt and GTK or Windows Native Forms or WX widgets to put like a button on the screen. Right? We want to solve all of that for you. And the type of, the level of functionality that you would need to do your job faster. And if you have any ideas around that specifically, what we can help you with in our toolbox, that would be great. I see some questions now, okay, so that's great. good. Thank you. Yeah, before I was talking, uh, I, I think I talked to you guys and then I think the, the idea is in general pretty interesting. I think one way pr probably would be pretty useful, especially 
technically, if you think the material or the, or the bundle or whatever we are designing is literally different type of interactions, right? And then it's just like the building blocks are different. Currently, we cannot really generalize all different type of interactions in, in all the way. But someday, we probably can realize, okay, we can actually do the treat some of the interactions in the same way. So, um, so just prepare for, you know, like that generalization day and also uh, adding more building blocks because currently probably like protein, um, peptide and DNA, but in the future, I guess like probably also new stuff coming. So a standardized way of adding um, building blocks would be a pretty good thing. So um, I think it would be pretty interesting to have a standard a page which is just literally coming. So this is how you add in new stuff like new building block, new type of interaction, new score function, or whatever. And then, so it's also just helping the future developers, I think. Yeah, that, that's one, one thing I realized. And, I, and also, I feel like with those type of things adding, you can also merge between systems in an easier way. Yeah. That makes sense. Thank you. Yeah, um, so why, why develop something new? Why don't you use Samson? Or why don't you use can do the stuff I've been developing? Or there's a couple of other sort of molecular modeling general things that have plugins. I, I'm not challenging, I'm not arguing against what you're doing, but it does seem like you're reinventing a wheel, a big complicated wheel. I've been working on it for 30 years, like writing a million lines of code to do this. We have Samson as well, which is a very rich code base that can do plugins and stuff. And what are we missing that you guys are going to be able to provide? And if not, maybe we should have a sit down for half an hour and just talk about different uh, uh, what we've learned about doing this that might help inform you what well, you're doing. But definitely want to have that talk anyway, so we should do that. I think. Yeah. Sure. Great. There's still a bunch of breakout spaces, so uh, that's definitely still an op option to do. Uh, that was lovely, but this is a comment that um, for a lot of the beautiful talks, you know, there, there's a real disconnect between, I think, between the community you're trying to serve, that is the chemistry community, and then trying to bridge that with the computational chemist. Now, I, I mean, I do computational material science, and I barely understand a few words that were, were said. I think the person who, who gave a talk yesterday about um, what we did wrong in computer science did a brilliant job because he... He expressed ideas in a very simple way. And I think that's a really important thing to get around. I, don't, I haven't really heard that in the past couple of days. A real user interface where an, a naive person, but an intelligent naive person, can use, this pro, can use the programs. That was Jonathan Blow. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, uh, I, can, I can just talk a lot. But the recording. Okay, I'll talk more quietly. Um, so, so I know you guys uh, sort of rejected the the uh, uh, paradigm that we were supposed to be using, but I would still challenge you to go through the the Hellmeyer Catechism, um, especially especially when it's it's less of a research program and more of a development program. Um, because I, I still think, uh, I, like I think the ambition is there and I think that you can execute on it, but I think that the like narrowing it down and really answering those things uh, might be really useful. So, so it's like less of a question and more of a comment of just like, I, I really would challenge you to to go through those, and I'd be interested. Yeah, we we have done some of those things internally for the. I I've pushed Eric to to get answers to some of these questions. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any further questions, comments? Uh, cool. Yeah. One more. Yeah. Just to echo what uh, Vikram was saying, and also like some discussions I had yesterday with uh, Lee and a few other people. It kind of seems like you could just work on improving the annotations to PDBs to include all of the steps that you're taking. Because I know if you use LAMPS, it has its own output, and then you have other GUIs, you have its own output. 
and you know like PDBs or some other source could kind of aggregate these a little bit better so that it's more readable to Anna and other chemists. So I guess, are you looking to do that kind of work, like PDB annotation, or do you think that it's just you well, know, not really good to do? There was something we actually, that was discussed and brought to our attention during uh, today's session. Uh, and yeah, that sounds like a good idea. So we'll probably do something like that, yes. Just comment again that the center of gravity or focus of the project is on being able to describe complex systems in coarse grain detail, progressively refine it to define tasks that then can be addressed experimentally at development at the component level. So it's relating the things that can be done in the laboratory to positions in complex systems that cannot be designed bottom up because the pieces will never fit together unless you have a system architecture. Wonderful. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.